In this video, I'll be setting up an L2TP IPsec VPN running on a Synology NAS, and thanks to viewer AB for suggesting that I create this video. I'll start off by creating a user specifically for the L2TP IPsec VPN connection. Next, I'll go through the steps to configure L2TP IPsec using the VPN server package available through the package center. I'll then set up a DDNS domain name and enable external access to the ports required to connect to the L2TP IPsec VPN using port forwarding. Finally, I'll set up and connect to the L2TP IPsec VPN from both a Windows 10 and Mac OS system. Note that I mistakenly ran through the setup process on virtual DSM-6, but you'll find that the setup is very similar to DSM-7 and feel free to leave a comment down below if you run into any problems with your setup. Let's start by creating an account that we'll use for the L2TP IPsec VPN connection. Here in DSM, I'll open Control Panel, then User. I'll click Create User to start up the User Creation Wizard and enter in a name and password for the user. And that's all that's needed, so I'll click through the rest of the wizard screens to finish up the setup. Next, we'll need to add the VPN server package from the package center and launch the application either directly from within the package center or from the main menu. This brings us to the overview screen where we can see the list of VPN servers that we can configure, which includes L2TP IPsec. I covered the items listed under Manage VPN Service in my OpenVPN video, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. The main items I'd like to point out are under General Settings where you can grant VPN permission to newly added local users, which I'll uncheck, and Autoblock, which I'd recommend you enable. Also, under Privilege, I'd recommend only providing access where required. So in this example, I'm disabling all access except for L2TP IPsec access to the VPN account. Next, under Setup VPN Server, I'll select L2TP IPsec. I'll check the box to enable the L2TP IPsec VPN Server, which allows me to adjust the remaining options. I'll leave these settings as default, but I'll run through them just in case you need to adjust them for your environment. For dynamic IP address, the main thing to look for is that the IP range that you choose does not conflict with the IP address ranges that you use on your LAN. Change the default IP address range if it does. Maximum connection number limits the number of connections to the L2TP IPsec VPN server. Maximum connections of an account limits the number of connections for an individual account. Authentication I'll leave as MSCHAP version 2, which allows for encrypting clients' passwords during authentication. MTU or Maximum Transmission Unit limits the data packet size transmitted over the VPN and the default of 1400 is a good starting point. Use Manual DNS allows you to set and push a specific DNS server to the L2TP IPsec clients. If left disabled, clients will get the DNS server assigned to the Synology NAS. I'll keep Run in Kernel Mode enabled to maximize the VPN performance. We'll then need to enter in and confirm an IKE authentication pre-shared key that each client needs in order to access the L2TP IPsec VPN server. Make sure to use a strong key using a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. Enable SHA-2 256 compatible mode 96-bit I'll leave unchecked. I found that macOS clients work best with this option left disabled. I'll click Apply to save the settings and click OK on this message window regarding port forwarding and firewall settings. Next, we'll set up DDNS and port forwarding, which I covered in my video on remotely accessing a Synology NAS running DSM-7 with DDNS and port forwarding which I'll link to in the card above and in the description below for your reference. For DDNS, the goal is to set up a domain name that remains consistent as the IP address assigned 
by your ISP changes. This is set up from Control Panel, External Access, and DDNS. Like my DDNS and port forwarding video, I'll be using Synology as the DDNS provider and enter in a host name I'd like to use. I'll click OK, then log in to my Synology account. For L2TP IPsec, we don't need an SSL certificate to set up a VPN, so I'll select No here. For port forwarding, my router doesn't support UPnP, so I need it to manually forward ports on the router itself. Here's a screenshot of the port forwarding rules for L2TP IPsec. Basically, I needed to enable UDP ports 1701, 500, and 4500 on my router to forward to the corresponding ports on my Synology NAS. We're now ready to configure our clients to connect to the L2TP SEC VPN, and I'll start off by setting up a Windows 10 system. I'll go to Settings, Network and Internet, VPN, and click on Add a VPN Connection. This brings up the Add a VPN Connection window where, under VPN Provider, I'll select Windows Built-in. For connection name, I'll enter in a meaningful name. Under server name or address, I'll enter in the DDNS host name that was set up earlier. VPN type is L2TP IPsec with pre-shared key, and I'll enter in the pre-shared key in the box provided. Type of sign-in info will be username and password, which I'll enter into their respective boxes. I'll keep the Remember My Sign-In Info box checked and save the VPN connection. Next, because my Synology NAS and the L2TP IPsec VPN server is behind my firewall and is using NAT, I need to create a registry entry on my Windows 10 system so I can establish a VPN connection. I'll leave a link in the description below explaining this problem and the workaround more thoroughly if you'd like to understand the steps that I'll be going through next. I'll click in the Windows search box, type in regedit, hit enter, and select yes on this window to bring up the Windows registry editor. Now I'll navigate to HKey local machine, system, current control set, services, and policy agent. Once here, I'll right click on policy agent and select new DWORD 32-bit value. I'll name the new value Assume UDP Encapsulation Context on Send Rule. Next, I'll right-click on the entry and select Modify. In the value box, I'll enter 2, make sure the base is hexadecimal, and click OK. Now I'll close the registry editor and restart my Windows 10 system to have the changes take effect. I should now be able to connect to the L2 TP IPsec VPN for my Windows 10 system. I'll first connect to my iPhone personal hotspot to make sure I'm on an external network. Next, I'll select the VPN profile that was set up earlier and click Connect. Now, I'm able to connect to my Synology NAS and log on to DSM, which is only accessible on my LAN through the VPN connection. Now let's set up a macOS system to connect to the L2TP IPsec VPN running on my Synology NAS. I'll start by bringing up System Preferences, then Network. Here I'll click on the plus icon to create a new connection. From this window I'll select VPN for the interface. For VPN type I'll select L2TP over IPsec. For service name, I'll enter in a descriptive name for the VPN connection and click Create. Now, with the VPN selected, I'll enter in the server address, which is the DDNS host name created earlier, and for account name, I'll enter in the username, which was created earlier as well. I'll bring up the authentication settings and enter in both the user's password in the password box and the pre-shared key in the shared secret box and click OK. Next, I'll click on Advanced and check the box to send all traffic over VPN connection and click OK. Finally, I'll click Apply to save the changes. Now I'll test the setup by first connecting to my iPhone personal hotspot. I'll then make sure to select the L2TP IPsec 
network configuration and click Connect to establish the VPN connection. Now I'll be able to access my Synology NAS and log into DSM, which is only accessible on my LAN through the VPN connection once again. I hope this video on setting up an L2 TP IPsec VPN running on a Synology NAS was helpful and, if so, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, let me know if you try this setup and how things work out for you in the comments below. Lastly, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to this channel as well. Thanks so much for watching.